Why are zombies such a threat to physicalism? Well, physicalism is the idea that the universe is lawful, that it's governed by simple and universal laws, and that the universe is rational. In other words, things don't just jump in and out of existence, and that the laws don't just change, and that the universe is causally closed. That means that the things that happen inside our universe have a cause, and that cause is also contained inside our universe. Now, the zombie argument is an attack on naive physicalism. You'll remember when we had our talk about physicalism, there's multiple forms of physicalism, and the zombie argument is not an attack on all of them. When, when philosophers use the term naive, they mean it in a not-so-nice way. In other words, a position that's not well thought out or rather basic. So why, why are physicalists so confident in their position? Well, we have to look at the history. Ancient men must have been pretty amazed that animals moved. In other words, they, they gave, used the word animal, which comes from the root animate, which talks about the motion. Well, in the 1940s, we discovered energy. And we discovered that energy could be transformed from one form to another. That heat could be turned into motion and motion back into heat. Pretty soon we were building machines that could move. And not just move, but outperform animals by quite a bit. Then in the 1820s, we discovered organic chemistry. Up until that point, we thought that organic molecules were so complex that they couldn't be made in a laboratory. But it turned out they were chemicals, just like everything else. In the 1840s, we discovered the science of thermodynamics and the closely related field information theory took root. Up until this point, we thought life was so organized and complex that it couldn't just have happened and that it maintains itself, and that's very mysterious. But it turns out that we started to understand the mathematics and the statistics behind it, and that the sun was the source of all the energy that kept the organization going. And then everything changed in the 1950s. We discovered DNA. Here were the blueprints for life. Up until this point, it was a profound mystery how an embryo could develop inside an egg and its body could take shape and all the parts were to develop. Well, the blueprints were right here, coded in the information in DNA, which also coded for proteins and chemicals that we needed to sustain our lives. Well, there was still something else. Animals can plan for the future and they can reason, especially humans. Well, in the 1960s and the 1970s, computer science really took off and we started programming machines that could plan and reason. I mean, about this time, I think scientists had to be feeling pretty good about themselves. I mean, what else is left? Couldn't we build a machine that could do all these things that we've so discovered up to this point? Well, here's where the zombie argument gets some traction. What if God built this machine? What if he made it exactly like a human with, uh, with the ability to do everything that we could do, built uh, with the exact same chemicals and carrying on the exact same processes? Would it suddenly become human and do everything we could do? Or did he have to add some extra little spark, something extra special in order to create consciousness? Well, let me draw you an analogy. Let's say you own a motorcycle. Now let's also say that science pretty much understands how a motorcycle works, except for one nagging detail. We don't understand how the motorcycle can generate that loud noise that comes out of the tailpipe. It's a mystery. Well, a friend of yours says to you one day, you know, the noise that comes from a motorcycle must be operating outside the natural laws of physics. I mean, after careful examination, no one can see how the physical activity inside a motorcycle can cause this noise. There must be some kind of a noise spirit inside the motorcycle. Well, you're a physicalist, and you say to him, hogwash. I mean, we don't have the noise figured out yet, but there's no reason to believe that the motorcycle noise is supernatural. 
So your dualist friend says to you, I can prove that the noise is supernatural. I can produce a motorcycle that is exactly like your motorcycle in every exact detail with fuel in the fuel tank and oil in the crankcase. And this motorcycle will run like your motorcycle. There will only be one difference. This motorcycle won't make a sound. It'll be a zombie motorcycle. Well, is your friend right? What if he could actually produce a motorcycle like this? I mean, you can compare this motorcycle to your motorcycle and you'll find that it's identical in every physical way and it's made from exactly the same materials. Well, according to all known laws of matter, the zombie motorcycle should function exactly like your real motorcycle. And it does function like your motorcycle, except that it's totally quiet. That would mean that the real motorcycle has some activity going on in it, above and beyond the natural laws of matter because the zombie motorcycle has every natural thing that the, mo the real motorcycle has, but it doesn't make a sound. So it must have something else in addition. And that something else is not natural. It's supernatural. So if your friend could demonstrate a motorcycle like this, a zombie motorcycle to you, that would certainly threaten your concept of physicalism.